Welcome back guys, I've got a Vauxhall Vivara here with an R9M engine. This particular one's an R9M408. There are other variations of it, uh, uh, 402 or 450, 452. These last three numbers don't really matter, the engine is still the same, they just denote different horsepowers. So this particular engine is a Renault engine, you'll find it in, in Renaults, uh, Vauxhalls, even some of the Nissans. So we're going to go through the motions of replacing this timing chain and hopefully you'll join me on this journey. So I've got the van on the ramp, uh, it's going to go up, we're going to take the under tray off, uh, driver side wheel off, the timing chain is on the, on the right side which is the off side, uh, inner arch out just to gain some access so we can see what we're dealing with, I'm uh, going to drain the oil out of it and see what steps we need to take next. Expose the pulley now, the drive belt. So this is the cover that's got to come off with the timing chains that's behind it. Seems to be quite a bit of room on This will drop further down once we take the top engine mount off, and this mount here will be holding uh, the weight of the engine and the gearbox one. I've supported the engine now, so I'm going to undo the, the engine mount here and free the engine away from the body. Pulley's off, uh, the engine's hanging off the engine mounts the lower there. You can see most of the bolts here and we can get to quite a few at the top as well. The water pump pulley might be in the way so I have to take that off as well. So you can see a bit clearer now. Uh, the edge of the water pump is just right in front of this cover so I'm going to take this pulley off and we can see the bolts for the rest of the engine mounts. Yeah, these two here, one there, one there, and I think there's a few more up top. So we'll un undo those from the bottom as well, so we can get this uh, entire cover off.
So I've got the timing cover off. This is the chain tensioner. You can see that the pins come out quite far. Now when turning over a crankshaft, it should always go clockwise, but, but the purposes of this, I'm just gonna go forward and backwards. I'm gonna look at that tensioner. See it springing backwards and forwards? But that's faulty, because it shouldn't be doing that. One is too far out and two is bouncing backwards and forwards. At the beginning of this um, job, I couldn't really get the sound of the chain to come through on the video because the diesel is so noisy. Uh, we had all the wheel arches in, so it was quite difficult, but it was definitely a rattle there. So I need to time this up. So this notch here lines up with this. Always turn clockwise. So this is reasonably close, but the top might be 180 degrees out. So we need to bring it down, have a look at the top, see if the top's lined up. So this is a technical drawing. It's not very technical. Um, we've got the dots to imagine, you know, the hole. It's just imaginary, really. These lines aren't actually there. So yes, we have this line, nothing to marry it up to. And then we have the hole. Again, nothing to marry it up to apart from this. Apart from this. So it's not very helpful. And if you look at the crank, um, that's a bit more helpful. At least we know that we've got that groove lining up with that pin. The timer was 180 degrees out, so I've timed it back up. Uh, I've put a Tipex mark here. Some mechanics see that as a taboo using Tipex, but you're better off having some marks and no marks. The more marks you have, the more accurate your work's going to be. Um, so I've put a mark on this pulley here, as you can see but be mindful we're replacing this pulley so that tip X mark will disappear but we also have this sprocket here which also has a line on it um, I've also tip X that just about to see it give me a rough guide so once, once this sprocket's off you're going to lose that mark so be careful of what you mark so before we take the tensioner off I'm just going to loosen these three bolts and then I'll take attention on the channel. Both these chains, the new and the old side by side, clamped to a bench. Now you may have heard the phrase that your chain is stretched. It's actually a fallacy. There's, there's no such thing as chain stretching. Chains don't stretch, they're made of steel. What chains actually do is wear out because they have individual links and as the chain goes round and round these pins wear out very slightly. As they wear out, the tolerances in between these pins get slightly larger, giving the illusion that the chain has stretched, but the chain has actually worn. So the one at the front here is the old chain, and the one at the back is the new chain. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let these both drop as they're clamped. And the one that's the lowest is the worn chain. And the new one, where the pins aren't worn, it's a lot more rigid. So the wear is in these pins. Hence we've got this extra droop because there's extra tolerance in these in these pins. Each link, if you measure them, they're exactly the same size as the new one. The links themselves haven't changed, but the pins have worn out. So you can see a droopy chain, a massive difference. The chains don't stretch, they just wear out. But the sprockets have worn out as well. So what's happened is the sprockets have got smaller. But the chain's got even looser. So that's why the, the tensioner was pushed out so far. Because they're trying to make up the tolerance of the worn pins and the worn, worn sprockets. So this is our new and old chain kit. All spread out on the floor. <clears throat> I've put some gloves on now. Because I was taking this bottom pulley off. It's difficult to tell on the camera but these edges are so sharp. Where, um, where the sprocket's worn out 
well there's half as many teeth on this as there is on that so this is doing twice the work of that one so this is usually twice as worn as the camshaft gear so that's our new tensioner new guide Okay, top pulleys on, guides on, top bolts tightened, top bolts tightened, you need to tighten this one up uh, and then get the tension on. Now before we tighten up the bolts up top, we need to put tension on this chain. So we're going to pull this pin out. The mark is roughly lined up with that. You can now see the plunger is less than half the distance out as it was before. The plunger was practically here last time. So remember when we marked this up earlier, you can see that the mark has actually moved. So when we released these bolts, um, this actually swung over on the cam lobes. So now what we need to do, now we've got tension on the chain, we're going to pull this back over to the timing mark. You see that moving? And then we're going to tighten these bolts up here. Mark's quite a way out. Okay, that's spot on now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, the vehicle back up again, turn the engine a couple of times, recheck it. And then if I'm happy with it, I'll nip these, I'll nip these bolts up here. Okay, I've turned the engine around twice. I'm happy with the marks. So I'm gonna tighten these bolts up. Okay, chains on, everything's tight. Uh, all that's left to do now is clean all this um, old silicon from around the edges. I'm sure you don't want to watch a video of me cleaning that, so we'll skip that and I'll clean it up and we'll move on to the next step. Clean the block up, I've put some silicon on there already. When it comes to doing these timing covers, uh, you can either silicon here or the cover or both, and I like to do both. So I've smeared a, a thin film on the block. Uh, just made a, a thin film on here and then I've put a bead on there as well. The reason I do that is as you saw when I was taking these off I had to use a pry bar and these covers they tend to twist and buckle a little bit so a little extra silicon doesn't hurt. Don't forget the silicon in the back of these before these go on otherwise the oil will leak through the bolts.
belts on, um, just tighten the water pump up. Um, I've over silicon here, I did that by mistake, but um, I can tell if it's dry, so I can put oil in it. And it's pretty dry, it's been dry for about an hour and a half. So I'm going to replace the oil filter for now, probably give it another hour before I put any oil in it. guys I hope you enjoyed that video what an arduous job I will take a cam belt any day over a timing chain the reason the timing chains wear out um, as technology has moved on oil viscosity has got thinner chains they just wear out the, the oil is almost like water it's so thin uh, in the old days where we used to use 2050 oil it was like treacle you know the, the chain used to last generally the life of the engine but now we're doing timing chains uh, as frequently as we are doing timing belts. It's, it's a hell of a job. It's dirty. Uh, you may have noticed that um, since yesterday to today I've started to wear my blue gloves because my hands were so dirty yesterday. Uh, it took me hours to clean them when I got home. And you can't put grubby hands on your wife, so they've got to be clean. Um, if you like some of the tools that I use on this job, there is an affiliate link at the bottom, there's no cost to you, just have a look, if there's something you like, just click on the link, uh, it might be a benefit to you. As always, I appreciate you watching, could you please just hit the like button, the subscribe button and the notification bell so you're notified next time I upload a video. Take care guys.